Welcome to Proven Improbable. I'm your host, Maurice Jackson. Joining us today is James Pettit. He is the president, CEO, and director of Abin Resources. Mr. Pettit, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Mr. Pettit, we're glad to have you back on the show. We have some exciting news coming out of your flagship project, the Forest Kerr, which is located in the Golden Triangle of British Columbia. But before we proceed, for someone who is new to the story, who is Abin Resources and what is the thesis you're attempting to prove? Well, Abin Resources is a gold exploration company. Um, uh, we we basically have have taken on some relatively new projects that at the same time are old. They just haven't been worked for a long time, but they all have a lot of data. Our flagship is the Forest Curve project. Uh, we have a project in the Yukon um, called the Justin Project, and we have a project in Saskatchewan called the Chico Project. So Western Canada is a very good jurisdiction. It's a very safe, politically safe jurisdiction to work in. Um, and there's, you know, obviously the history is there too, because there's lots of discoveries from the past, and there's a lot of very good information available to us on these projects, properties. So that's what we look for, and our ex expertise is uh, discovery. In our last interview, we discussed the discovery of a new boundary zone at the Force Curve. Today, we will discuss Abin Resources' two most recent press releases regarding high-grade gold discoveries at the northern boundary of the Forest Kerr and the final results of the 2018 program. Mr. Pettit, what can you share with us? Well, when we talked last, we had, uh, I believe that that news release at that time, we had moved the rig a kilometer and a half south of the north boundary zone where our initial discovery is. Um, and we drilled three holes there, and that we put out a news release about that. We were very encouraged because we hit some very good mineralization, very broad zones of lower grade. Um, and that got us excited because, you know, we know that we're probably could easily have been one degree or two degrees off to the north, south, east, or west, and we could have hit potentially what we had already discovered to, at the north boundary zone. And it tells us that the whole boundary zone in, in, in general is alive. It, there's lots of mineralization there. And, uh, you know, we're in an area that's two kilometers wide by about four kilometers long. And everywhere we drill, we're hitting mineralization. Uh, and it varies from very high grade. You get these sections that are very high grade. And then around it, 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 you know, it either carries on or diminishes. So, you know, the very beginning of our program this year, we hit very high grade. It was 30, 38 grams over 10 meters in that. And then as the next 10 holes, we drilled around it as step outs. And we were continuing to hit some really good intersections there with a lot of lower grade uh, interspersed within it, some very broad zones. And I'm talking 70 to 100 meters. Um and as we get away, we're now into the last two news releases that we're going to talk about now. And, and as we moved away from that high-grade north boundary zone, the the high-grade intercepts, they tend to diminish instead of being 30-something grams. They're, they may be 5 to 14, and we get these intercepts that might be 1 to 2 meters wide, and then they're they're surrounded by lower grade that could be anywhere from half gram to three grams or that sort of thing. But again, still broad intersections in most of the holes. Some of the holes we didn't hit anything, but there was, um, as I recall it, it was holes 22 to 36 that we came out with first, um, you know, two news releases ago, and then we came out with 37 to 45, and that's the end of the program. And most of those holes were exactly what I was just talking about. They're very broad intersections of low grade with the occasional high grade spike. Um, that's definitely got our interest um, as, you know, it tells us we're we're in a, an environment that's extremely alive. It's the right rock package. We're in the right location. And we just, we need to drill more. Um, a side note, all the drilling we've done since the initial discovery is oriented core. Uh, drilling, which is a technique so that we can understand the orientation and the structures because um, we need that's very important so it can tell us you know where to drill 
uh, also another side note is the reason we went to the south boundary zone um, for those three holes. We needed time to get some assays back to give us information on the north boundary zone where the high grade discovery was to give us an indication of where we should be drilling. Um, so that those three holes, although you know it was a side note, they turned out to be extremely exciting for us because we know we can go down there and do a lot more drilling. Um, over top of everything else, we've also got a lot of a lot more targets to work with in this total boundary zone that we haven't even gotten to yet, um, and it's it keeps the you know the future is 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 looking very bright and uh, you know I, I just think for next year once we get all the data compiled from this year we're, we're going to be a lot smarter we've got um, permitted already we were hoping to have the pad location permits earlier in the season which would have allowed us to move the drill you know around on new pads so that we get better angles and orientation but that wasn't the case we got that permit after the season and it was delayed specifically because of the amount of fires we had in the area last year. They just, the ministry stopped issuing permits, um, which was too bad. But, you know, we had 10 pads that we could, we were limited to. What we've got now is uh, permits for 40 new pad locations, all pre-approved. Um, and that, that'll get us through the next few years. Mr. Pettit, how would you grade the 2018 season's work and the results on the Forest Kerr? I would say the work so far to date is, has been very exceptional. Um, we did discover a zone right out of the chute, and it was our number one target out of about 15 for this whole area. Um, and we're still on it. That, that's a big deal. Because um, we discovered this basically through the data compilation and a little additional field work that we did back in 2017. Um, and we did come up with some success right away, and we're still there. And it brought us to this very large zone. It was an old um, um, geochemical um, anomaly that was discovered back in the 80s uh, or so, early 80s. And uh, we've made it bigger. We've filled in some gaps. We are going to be doing a geophysical airborne survey with a drone early this uh, coming 2018 season, it'll probably be in May, um, that'll overlay everything we're looking at. And we've got several more targets to work work with. So as a real first season, because 2018 really is the first season on concentrating on this, uh, the boundary zone. And I would say with the data we've accumulated, it's, uh, it's extremely good. Uh, I think we've got a lot ahead of us. Moving on to the remaining project portfolio, can you please provide us with some updates on each of them, respectively? The our Justin property in the Yukon, uh, I've done very quietly some uh, trenching and uh, more soil sampling work up there this year. Started last year, we ended up with uh, some really good results from golden golden soil and um, an anomaly, uh, and so we did a golden grain count where you actually extract the gold grains from a bulk sample, 30 kilo, kilograms. Um, and it came back incredibly high, you know, whatever it was, 12, 1,200 gold grains. And they were jagged, meaning they're pristine, meaning they haven't traveled very far through glaciation or anything like that. So we're sitting what we felt was very close to or on top of the source. We went in this year with a small mechanical excavator that we took up by helicopter and we did some excavating and, and channel sampling and throughout that whole area, the, well, two, two targets were 125 meters apart. Both targets had a tremendous amount of coarse and visible gold in the soils and, you know, and, and the, uh, what you extract from the, from the um, channel samples. And so we sent a lot of assays in. Um, those are just coming, they're Basically, I think they're in the hands of the geo right now. Uh, I'll be coming out with some information on that. You can see some of the gold an, uh, analysis on our website. We've got uh, visible gold on the website now for the Justin Project. You can see it. It's pretty incredible. We think we've got a, an extension of Golden Predators Three Aces Project, which is very high-grade gold. 
Um, and that ties in nicely with what we drilled several years ago back in 2012 on that property. And we thought we have a, well, we're pretty sure we have a intrusion-related gold system, which is generally lower grade, uh, but large, like Fort Knox or Virginia gold. Um, these are, you know, very structurally controlled elements. Uh, and they can prove to be very large. But we seem to have an overprinting of two different mineralizations happening because they're very close to each other. So this is exciting for us. We're going we're gonna to spend more time and effort up there um, in the off, well, what's the off season for Forest Kerr? We can probably get up there hopefully by March. Um, even though it's in the Yukon, it's further inland, it's further to the east, so it's away from the coast where you get some tremendous weather that uh, is not conducive to doing any work. Um, and then in Saskatchewan, the, the uh, Chico project, we have, um, a, well, it's drill ready. Uh, we've got a f some final um, negotiations have been tied up. Everything's looking good with the local native group. Um, and, I, you know, we should be good to go the late February, early March there. And, you know, we've got a, you know, it's, it'll be a good drill program, probably no more than 10 holes, but we know where to drill. Um, that was all set up last year, and it's following a model that SSR, used to be Silver Standard, is doing on our northern boundaries. Um, they have uh, a very large program going on there because they bought Claude Resources, which had the CB mine. And there's the CB and Santoy deposits, and their property comes now down right down to ours. And they're doing a, a 40,000 meters of drilling. And that is basically half of that is for exploration to increase their resource so they can keep the mine open for, a, you know, an additional 10 years or whatever they, they're planning. Uh, but we're following their exploration model as well. So that's all coming up. And, and in, in, in fact, I think basically this year was good enough that we raised the money we need to probably do everything we want. We may do another smaller financing next year. Um, but... We're well positioned with cash. We've got six million in the till, and uh, you know we that was raised at higher prices during the season this year, thirty thirty cents and uh, forty five cents. Well, that's very encouraging to hear. Switching gears, the value proposition for Abin Resources, in our view, has only improved as management continues to meet and or exceed timelines and goals with very positive results, and yet the share price has responded counterintuitive. What would you like to tell current and prospective shareholders regarding the stock price? Well, the reason I want to advance the Justin and the Chico projects is to keep that cyclical event from happening, because if you look at the chart, you can see it. Last summer, big spike at the end of that like by October, the end of October, the season up in the Golden Triangle pretty much ends. It's it's a very very severe winter. It, it's high altitude and it's coastal mountains and it's you can get thirty to forty feet of snow. Um, so you're not doing anything up there, and you got to get out. And that also coincides, you know, like it or not, with tax law selling. So if you only have the one project, then you're really going to subject yourself to this cyclical nature. And, you know, the best time to buy the stock has always been November. And you hold it and wait until you get going again. And uh, But what we're doing is adding in these other two projects, which are going to add some life. And I think you're seeing it right now. The stock did not come all the way down the way it did last year. And I, as a matter of fact, I think I'm starting to see it bounce a little bit because tax loss selling is pretty much over the way and I would out of the way and I wouldn't be surprised at all if you see this stock back up in the you know where it should be in the 20s. Mr. Pettit, can you please share the last time you purchased shares and at what price? The last time would have been a financing as I recall cuz I just took down the warrants on that one. Um the pages paid for them. I didn't sell anything. Um as a matter of fact, I've never sold anything. Um, it was probably at $0.12, cents actually, uh, da, 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 last year, 18 months ago, I think. And for the record, we're looking to continue to add to our position in Abin Resources in the near future as we like the value proposition before us at the current share price. Before mm -hmm. we close, Mr. Pettit, multi-layered question. What is the next unanswered question for Abin Resources, and when should we expect results, and what determines success? 
Well, the next unanswered question is when <laughs> when can we get back in there to do more work? And you know that's going to be next June, um, if not it's sooner. Um, and you know I think going forward in the immediate future, what's what's on the horizon, and that's going to be the Justin project. Mr. Pettit, we've covered the good. What keeps you up at night that we don't know about? Well, right now, um, I'm starting to like gold. I, that kept me awake for a while, is was, uh, <laughs> what was going on for gold. And I think we're seeing a bit of relief, uh, you know, and it's a consequence of other external factors, macro. And I think we're, we're going to be looking at a probably a good year uh, for gold. But that has traditionally been what, what's kept me uh, awake is the fear of gold dropping more. And it's actually held beautifully, I think. I would agree with that sentiment, sir. Finally, what did I forget to ask? I think you got it. To be honest with you, I think you've uh, you got everything. I'm all right. I, I, I can't think of anything. <laughs> well, Mr. Pettit, for someone listening that wants to get more information on Abin Resources, please share the website address. It's uh, abinresources.com, www.abinresources.com. And as a reminder, Abin Resources trades on the TSXV symbol ABN and on the OTCQB symbol ABNAF. For direct inquiries, please contact Don Myers at 604 639 3851. That number again is 604 639 3851. He may also be reached at info at abinresources.com. And as a reminder, Abin Resources is a sponsor of Proven and Probable, and we are proud shareholders for the virtues conveyed in today's message. Last but not least, please visit our website, provenandprobable.com, where we interview the most respected names in the natural resource space. You may reach us at contact at provenandprobable.com. James Pettit of Abin Resources, thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Thank you for joining us today on Proven and Probable. Remember to like and subscribe for more conversations with the most respected names in the natural resource space. Check out our website at www.provenandprobable.com. The information presented on Proven and Probable is provided for educational and informational purposes only, without any express or implied warranty of any kind, including warranties of accuracy, completeness, or fitness for any particular purpose. The information is not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice, or any other advice. You should not make any financial, investment, or trading decision based on any of the information presented without first undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional broker or competent financial advisor.